Good morning Saints. I do hope that you and your families are doing well and um, that you are enjoying the blessings of God's presence in your life. You know, we may be in the midst of a storm, but you know, with Jesus, when Jesus is with us, you know, he kind of, he buoys our spirits and he, he keeps us going and, and not only keeps us going, but uses us to encourage each other. And I think that's absolutely precious. And so um, let us, um, you know, bow our heads at this time as we seek to meditate upon God's words. Let us pray. Uh, dear Father, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Thank you for your great love. Lord, um, with you in our lives, Lord, we can face each and every day of our lives. Lord, the blessings as well as the challenges that life often brings. Lord, for we know that when you are, are there with us, when you are ordering our steps, when you are guiding us, Lord, uh, we have nothing to fear. And so, dear Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for the way that you have been navigating us through this pandemic and the way that you have been guiding governments, dear Father, around the world and being with healthcare systems, dear Father, um, as they have sought to, to save lives and so many different of the, you know, those the front work, uh, line workers, dear Father. And um, there are so many that make up that and I, I thank you for each and every one. And I pray, dear Father, that as we have come today to make meditate upon your words, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to give us understanding, lead us in all truth. And Lord, speak to us, for we love to hear your sweet voice. We ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, saints, let's go back to that text that has been such an encouragement to us throughout this pandemic. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. This is what Jesus has to say. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I praise God for these wonderful words of Christ that, you know, is such an encouragement to us. And we have been focusing on what God means, what Christ, um, you know, meant when he said that he is the life. And um, that's taken us across to John chapter 1. So let's take our Bibles in hand and read John chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 6. This is what he says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without um, him nothing was made that has been made. Um, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That was to verse five. And, um, you know, um, I praise God for those wonderful words. Um, you know, in the beginning was the word. Um, and the Greek word there used is logos. And, you know, for the Greeks, um, this um, didn't just denote the spoken word, but also referred to um, reason the very thought processes and um, when um, when applied to the to the universe it referred to that um, the you know the rational principle that governs all things now for the Jews um, it was somewhat different um, when they thought used the word logos uh, that word was loaded it was um, a direct reference to the very word of God it um, it connected to um, to the creative word of God that we find in Genesis one and two. God spoke the word, and our world came into existence. He created paradise for humanity. Uh, that's the love of our God for us. Um, and um, and you have a wonderful text such as Psalm thirty three. Let's let's turn there. 
um, Psalm chapter 33, and that's, um, and, and verse 6, Psalm 33, verse 6, this is what it says. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. You know, that's something that the, the Israelites, um, you know, they truly did celebrate, uh, you know, the creative power of God. And turn also to Psalm 119, verse 89. Um, this is what it says. <clears throat> Verse 89, your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Isn't that precious? Yes. So the word of God was something um, that the Jews truly treasured. And, you know, it's something that we treasure, you know. Um, there's something very special about God and his word. There's an assurance um, for our God is faithful in all that he does and in all that he says. Um now, it also referred to the law, the Decalogue, yes, the Ten Commandments, um, the Ten Words, um, as it's also referred to. Um, this Word of God um, that, you know, um, the, the Jews were to live by, not just for the Jews, but, but all people, yes? Um, and, and this was something that was well and truly um, treasured, and we looked at that last week, um, you know, and so uh, for for the Jews, the the law um, was was the means by which God shared um, with His covenant people the way that they should live, and you know it was the way of life. You know, and um, and and you know it's just really wonderful that um, that they embraced this. You know. I mean, even though we know from their history that they did have a bit of a checkered past and and but, you know, as they came to reflect on their law, um, it was very central to them. And especially at the time that Christ was going to begin his ministry, um, it was right there. We're going to see some of the battles that take place um, because of of Christ's perception of the law compared to, um, you know, the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees. And, you know, so um, we're, go we're going to really understand the nitty gritty of the perception that they held as regards the law. Yes. Um, but it let as we look at, um, at John chapter one, it says that, yes, in him was life. Yes. Um, now for the Jews, you know, to keep the law was life. Yes. Um, you know, and um, Jesus, he says that um, John stated that to have been with God, you know, the, the word was with God, yet it was distinct from God. Yes. Um, but also um, it was God. Yeah. And this is a direct reference to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ a member of the Godhead, yes? And um, if we um, we look at Romans um, chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, um, let's uh, turn there. Romans chapter 9. Almost there. Yes, here we go. Romans 9 and uh, verse 5. Just one more page to turn here. Let's have a little look. These pages want to stick together. <laughs> yes. Romans chapter 9 and verse 5. This is what it says. The Apostle Paul is speaking there, here. He says, theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. So here, um, the Apostle, Apostle Paul um, plainly states that, that Jesus Christ is God over all. Yes, and, and this is something that um, John, in this prologue to his gospel, um, you know, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, is, is plainly stating um, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is none other than God. Yeah, he has come 
um, you know, um, through the incarnation, born of a virgin, and um, and has come to save humanity. That promised seed of Genesis 3, um, verse 15, yes? And he has come. And as such, um, as, we, as we look at this text, it says that in him was life, yes? Um, he was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome him. And that's one of the things that we find um, in John 3.16, um, a most favorite text. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to this world to save humanity. Yes? To give us life. Yes? And um, there, our text that we refer to in John 14, verse 6, Jesus declares that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes? So, um, to have Christ is to have life. Yeah? Right? And as such, um, Jesus comes as the light into all the world. Um, let us look at... Um, John chapter 10 and um, verse 28. John 10 verse 28. Yes, here it is. Um, it says here, um, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. These are the words of Christ. You know, he is the life and he gives life. You yeah? And, and, you know, this is the, the beautiful thing. He came into this world um, as a member of the Godhead. And he would live. And he would be that life. He would give that light. Yes, he will be coming into a sinful world. And in that respect, he came into darkness. But the darkness could not overcome him. Yes, he would come. And he would bring life. And he would be light. So that we could catch a glimpse of the Father. How precious is this? We're going to look um, next time at what um, John the Baptist said about Jesus Christ. Yes? Um, and then we'll be able to move on to um, the, the life and the actions of Christ as he walked up and down this earth. This is truly wonderful. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Um, Lord, you give us life. You give us light. And, and you know, we, we are just so overjoyed because without you, we would actually be groping in darkness. We wouldn't have a clue. But Lord, because of your word, you teach us so many things. You help us to see how precious we really are, how valuable you are, we are, that you would send your son into this earth to die for us, to redeem us, to save us um, from, from sin and, and the deprivation that it, that it brings upon us. And, you know, Lord, I thank you for that. And I pray that you would continue to lay your hands upon us. Lord, anoint us and strengthen us. And Lord, do that work that is so needful in each of us. Forgive us where we have failed you. And help us to be the very light that you have called us to be. So that we can shine to the glory of your name. Be with us this week, Lord. Walk with us and talk with us and guide us. For I ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, saints, I hope that you have a truly wonderful day. Know that you are loved. Know that you are precious in God's sight. God bless you.